Hello, hello, this is Sarah and we are playing Creativerse Gone Wired. Release 33 is here, and the long-awaited wired blocks have finally arrived. Not only do these blocks add function and dimension to the game, they can also connect to current doors and gates, beacons, fans, most lights, and even fire pits. This video is the first in a series of step-by-step -step tutorials that assume no previous experience with circuitry, virtual or otherwise. So before we jump into our pile of new toys, let's learn a couple of words we'll need when talking about them, using something we're already familiar with, teleporters. If teleporters are still new to you, I've included links in the description to some helpful guides. When we place and then interact with a teleporter, we're shown its variables. A variable is a specific piece of information that can change. Names and passwords, for example, are variables. A world's preview image is even a variable. Our teleporter has two variables, this portal's code and teleports to. The first variable, this portal's code, is the teleporter's input. The second, teleports to, is its output. If we have two teleporters, and one teleporter's output matches another's input, they are connected, as if by an invisible wire. When we enter a teleporter that's wired to another, we act as a signal through that wire, traveling from the first to the second. Wireable blocks work just the same. If the output of one block and the input of another have the same variable, they become connected by a wire, and signals travel through them, from the output of the first to the input of the second. The output sends the signal, the input receives the signal. <clears throat> now that we've got a basic understanding of how wireable blocks connect, Let's unlock recipes and build our blocks. We're going to need lots of stone, stone slabs, stone rods, and magnetite. For some items, we'll also need arc stone, glass, and coal. The first and most necessary item we'll need is the wiring tool, unlocked when we first pick up coal. The wiring tool must be equipped in the tool slot just like the taming bell, plow, and other tools. When we equip and tap select our wiring tool, we're immediately introduced with a blue in-game hologram in our view, as well as a number of white icons on every nearby block that has wiring potential. The default message of our wiring tool's information pane commands us to click a hotspot. It's looking for a wireable block to tell us information about. If we hover over any wireable block, the pane changes, giving us details about that block. The first two lines tell us information about the wireable block's input and output. Further down, we can see the block's state. State tells us what the signal it's sending out is either a true signal or a false one. If it helps, you can think of true on and open meaning the same thing, and false, off, and closed also mean the same. True, false, open, closed, on, off. The other information on the wire tool's information pane can change from block to block, so we'll take a closer look at these when we learn about each different block associated with it. The wire tool also has other customizable options, which we'll come to later. Picking up the wiring tool for the first time unlocks the recipes for the pressure plate, LED, and switch. Picking up a switch for the first time gives us the recipes for the delay, flip-flop, and inverter. Picking up an inverter unlocks recipes for logic gate, which in turn unlocks recipes for number pad and number comparison gate. Let's take our pressure plate, switch, and delay, and play with some doors and lights. Okay, so I already have a place set up for us. 
They even have a nice door already set up for us. The pressure plate is a full block in height and has the collision of a full block. It lends itself very well to being placed in the ground. When we stand on it, it becomes lit and its output is true. And the minute we step off, its output is false. We've got our door, which is not currently connected. Let's connect these two. If we inspect the device settings with default in, it pulls up a dialog box and as you can see there are three variables, an output called sends, a reset delay, and a can interact checkbox. For now I am only concerned about the output, so let's go ahead and change that. The variable can be anything we want, so I'll put from plate to door, just for simplicity's sake. Now that's the output, so anything with an input that has that same variable should connect. So let's try it. From plate to door. And save. Aha. And as you can see, we have a wire, and we even have little arrows showing you which way the signal is flowing. So let's try it out. Step on it should be true, should open the door. Aha, very good. And if we step off, all done. Of course, that doesn't really give us a lot of space. Ow. But the pressure plate has a special variable just for that scenario. Reset delay is not like other delays. This one is just for the pressure plate, and it will hold the signal true for whatever we set it for. You can type in your number, or you can use the slider for any half second up to 10 seconds. Let's do two and a half. And after two and a half seconds, it has shut. This one I've already fixed, but you can see the can interact I have unchecked on this door. That means if I try to open it like normal, I get a nice pop-up that says the door is locked. If I have it checked, which it is by default, then when I click on the door, it opens as normal. Generally, you want your switches and plates to be interactable and the things you would like locked to not be interactable. Plates can also be set on their sides and activated by pressure from you. A player, an NPC, and any object can also activate it. They can even be placed upside down. Next we'll look at switches. A switch is less than a slab in size and has no collision. When off it's facing up and when on it faces down. This is the opposite as uh, the United States, but many other countries do this instead. You might have also seen old uh, monster movies with laboratories with switches like this. For this one we're going to use an alternate method for connecting the switch and light than we did for the plate and door. The game has a way to automatically connect switches for you. Hovering over the output, the send icon, you can see it turns green. Clicking on it gives us a live wire we're holding in our hands. And clicking on any receive input makes the connection automatically. Here I can see on my information pane that input and output are connected. 
But what if I would like to know exactly what that variable is? If we go to Game Options in the main menu, and then to Controls, down at the bottom is a new option, Show Wiring Details. Check it, and now you can see the actual variable used for your outputs and inputs. This one is called output 20469918981818. And as you can see on the light, it's exactly the same. If you ever find yourself cross-wiring things connecting like they're not supposed to, check for the name of the variable. What if something's wrong? What if you want to clear it out all together? By default, L will clear the variable. You can hover over the entire wireable without having the input or output highlighted in green, and it will clear all links. If you want to keep one link but not another, hover over the icon here highlighted in green, and you can see on our information pane it says break input link. Then it's cleared. And then you can reconnect again, however you need to. Let's test out our switch. On. Of course we started out on. Off. Oh, closed. On. Off. True. False. Here I have a beacon connected to a pressure plate. As soon as I step on the pressure plate, the beacon lights, and when I step off, the beacon closes. But what if I would like for there to be a pause even before the beacon lights up? A kind of uh, moment of hesitation and anticipation for a surprise to come? Let's use the delay. Looks like a clock takes up a half block space. Inspecting it shows us it has an input, an output, the delay, which is the core, and can interact. Let's set our delay for three seconds. Let's break our beacon, connect the pressure plate to the delay and the delay to the beacon, and test it out. Counts down three seconds before it sends a true signal. When we step off, it counts out three seconds before sending a false signal. What if we jump on the pressure plate and jump off real quick? Will it send a really small signal? We have three seconds to do it. Let's do it in one second on, one second off. Nope, no output. Same thing if we stand and wait until it's true. We hop off for a second and then hop back on no false output. For delays to work, they require a constant signal. Let's have a little more fun with delay. Let's say I want the red beacon to go off, and then a second later the yellow, and then a second after that the blue. Let's see. So let's connect these directly. So that should set it off immediately. Hi, Pixie. Now I want this one to be a second later. So let's set up our delay. Set it for a second. Connect our switch to the delay and the delay to the beacon. And one good thing to practice whenever you work with wireable blocks is test every step of the way and make sure things are working as you want them to 
even as you go along. Looks pretty good so far. Now we have an option. We can connect this delay to our second delay or the switch to the delay as well. Let's do the first option and connect our delay to this one. We want this to be one second after that one. So let's change it to one second. Connect it to our beacon. And test. Very good. How about directly to our switch? Let's clear this whole one with L without highlighting either the receive or the sends. And just to be sure, let's go ahead and clear our beacon as well. So we want to connect the switch to this one. Go ahead and connect it back to the beacon and test. Oh, those went off at the same time. If we connect both to the switch, we have to make sure the second one is held for a little bit longer. One second plus one second equals two seconds. Let's test again. Excellent. And that's how you use the delay. Well, that was a lot of new information, but we have many other blocks and abilities and so much, much more that we can do with them. In our next video, we'll play with LEDs, colors, and inverters, and we'll make a very simple multicolor single beam beacon. Let me know if these videos have been helpful to you in any way with a like and a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and take care.